welcome back to Paul Jamie Construction. On today's video, we're gonna be tackling a common and exciting renovation task, removing a load bearing wall and installing an RSJ. In this video, I'm gonna take you for a step-by-step -step process to safely and efficiently remove a load bearing wall. First thing you need to do, guys, is check whether the wall is load bearing. If you're not sure, then please check professional advice. This has been calculated by a structural engineer, so we know that it is load bearing. We've also got two RSJs to install, which we're gonna be installing flush in the ceiling. The next thing you need to do is check for electric cables and heating pipes and water pipes. Once you've determined which ones need to be moved, altered, cut or capped, then this needs to be done. We have propped up the ceiling joists on both sides. We've put a spreader plate, just a scaffold board on the floor, which spreads the weight across the joists and underneath the ceiling joists as well. And we've got one, two, three, five acro props on each side. That's gonna take the load of the floor joists. These floor joists, we're gonna be cutting away and sinking the RSJ between the two. So these pipes are in our way. We'll tackle them once the wall's down. We've got our protection in the hallway. Bit of Corex on the door. We'll take that shut when we start taking the wall down just to isolate the dust. Next task, we're upstairs. We've pulled the carpet back both sides. I'll take you up there now and we'll have a look, see how we're getting on. Prop pals on this one, just to make our life a lot easier. Again, we'll put spreader scaffold balls, spreader props across both sides. We've done the pockets for our needles. We're using a prop power on this one, just to make our lives a little bit easier. So we've got our spread spreader across the joists. One side of the prop power adjusts, the other end uh, is like a strong boy attachment. So you can come through the floor and put a standard acro on it. Or what we've done, he set it straight onto the spreader plate, like so. Make sure they're nice and level. Wind the other side in so it's nice and solid. Once that's done, that's safely, the wall below can safely come out. So Andy's cutting some timber wedges just to make sure it's absolutely tiger tight. And then uh, I'm gonna mark the wall downstairs, cut the line, and then we'll start breaking it out. What's happening, all geared up, ready to go. I've marked my line, got all set up. I've got my uh, dust suppression out, and my blade's gone on the 12 inch grinder, petrol grinder. So I'm gonna have to adapt and overcome Use a nine inch grinder, one on the grinder and one with the uh, vacuum for now. That wasn't too bad. A little bit of dust, but it's to be expected. So yeah, pleased with that. Let me 
Guys, we are finished for today. It is half three, so we've had a fantastic day. The wall is down in the skip. The wall above is safely propped so I can sleep well tonight. The customer's safe, living in an occupied house as well. It's all nice and tidy, so really, we're all systems go. I'll show you the two stills. They arrived about an hour ago. So I'll pick some materials up in the morning and then we'll resume. We'll show you the timber blocking, We'll show you sinking the RSJ in between, cutting the joist back, how we do that as well. So looking forward to it. Take care, see you in the morning. Morning guys, day two, Paul Jamie construction. Uh, the steels arrived yesterday, late doors, but we didn't need them. So they're here, ready to go now. I'm gonna be installing, showing you how to bolt the timber blocking inside in the web of the steel, drilling the holes through, coach bolts, M12 coach bolts. I'm just getting my table saw set up because I need to cut the uh, the height down. I've got 175 timbers and we need it 160 or 165. I believe it's got to take 10, 15 mil off the top, so I'll do that in a minute. I'll just put a new blade on the uh, on the table saw. Days. Look at that. Loving that, aren't we? Right, I'm going to go and do another one, exactly the same. Then I'll check the steel measurements because we might be reducing it by 100 mil. Um, it doesn't matter, we've got enough room for it to fit in, but it's going to make our life a little bit easier if we do take off as much as we can, getting the steel in and getting it around the acros and stuff like that. So I'll catch up with you in a bit, yeah? What I've done, I've cut my timber down to fit in the web. On these 102s, 178s, it's the same thickness as the web, so we don't need to put any packers in here, which is a touch. So I've just slotted my piece of timber in. I've put a bit of stock on this outside edge, put a clamp on it just to hold it in place. I've got myself a 13 mil drill bit which will fit in there like a glove. And all I'll do is I'll just drill through the back of these holes. The two big holes, I'll mark them as well. I have got a hole cutter. I'm not sure if it's too big. Yeah, it's a smidge too big. So I'll just mark the center of it and then uh, pull it away. <coughs> Excuse me. And then uh, drill them out.
These are amazing. Um, it's a 90 mil socket, which goes on an impact driver. But it's the deep one. So if you look in there, well you can't see that, but it's got another 40 mil or something like that at the bottom, 30 mil. So it manages to get that. I've got 40 mil on that thread still showing. Forty mil, look, and it's still. what we've done we set the laser up across from wall to wall because you've got 102 178 102s so it's essentially sitting on the brickwork or the blockwork both sides and it's going to be flush so it's in the ceiling void so we don't have to allow for any plasterboard so we put the laser across running from the the reveal on both sides and that gives us our line where we want to cut our joist back. So using uh, the jigsaw and the reciprocator. doing guys we're pretty much there for the day so I'll just quickly show you around we're working on the engineering pads below the steels so there wasn't a detail for any pad stones um, but it's always good practice to put engineering's in or pads just to spread the load so just reinstating where we broke out really put a couple of tires in it I'm gonna bring a steel plate in tomorrow put a bed on top of that with, with some dry pack which is like a lean mix see my other videos which I'll explain that in a bit more detail that side again a little bit low so I've just got to dry pack that and that one so I'll give it a wash down before I go that's nice and tight I bang some slate in there natural slate Get it nice and tight it's worked out lovely really so when we put this steel in underneath the brickwork we knocked up some cement um block brick layers muck so fairly fairly wet i put sharp sand as well so i put two thirds um building one third sharp and cement I put a nice sort of 50 60 mil bed along that steel and then as we jacked it up let's hit the existing brick wall above and then all squeezed out so that is absolutely tiger tight up there so I'm happy with this side the other side Andy went up and dry packed it we bedded a row of bricks on top of the steel and then we dry packed it forced it in there nice and tight 
So tomorrow, hopefully, we can take these acros down, um, and then we'll just leave the ones that are below the actual steel itself. I'll come back the following day, take them away, final sweep, job done. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you tomorrow. Morning guys, how are we doing? Day three on the steel knock through job. So we've took the props down this morning because we've done all the dry packing last night, make sure it's all solid. So they've come down, the acros or the needles upstairs have come down. So today's task, we need to dry pack between the engineering bricks and the steel on one, two, three sides. So that is essentially a lean mix, like a screed type mix with sharp sand and uh, cement, which is semi dry. So basically you need to be able to force it in nice and tight, nice and compact, and then it won't shrink. So you won't get any cracking upstairs. So I'm using, got sent a free gift yesterday. The Bucket Buddy, go and check them out guys if you've not seen it before, essentially it's a heavy duty bucket liner, comes as a kit and at the end of the day once you finish using your aggregate you scrape the sides or wash the sides down, let it set and then you just turn it inside out the following day so I'll update you on that, let you know how we get on with it but so far so good. Andy is just doubling up some of these timbers and put some bolts in and then we'll clear the job down, have a hoover up, tidy up and then we're done. What's up guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you found this helpful or useful, please give it a thumbs up and also hit the subscribe button for more renovation tips and projects like this one. <laughs> if you have any questions you'd like to ask or you wanna share some of your own renovation projects, then please do so in the comments below. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you on the next one.